All right, welcome back to another episode of Tribology, and thank you for joining me for another drawing lesson. And um, the teacher today is actually going to be the artwork that we're about to create. And what I mean by the teacher is the artwork is that we are going to be the vessel in which the lifeblood of the design flows through. We're going to bring this design to life by listening to it tell us what it wants to be and not tell it what it should be. We're going to have a visual conversation with this abstract design and allow the drawing to guide our hand as we move through the art creation process for this image. By allowing the artwork to teach us how to draw it and create it, the end result really will be free will on paper. The way that I achieve this idea of the artwork creating itself is by striking a balance in my head about what I'm actually thinking about while I'm creating the abstract design. I love when I'm drawing and everything seems to just fall into place. Every line goes where it needs to go, uh, every shape is created the way it needs to be created, and sometimes that intense resistance um, of where do I go next seems to just fade away. I like to try to get as close to separating my hand movement from my mind to the point where I'm actually just the observer in watching the artwork being created. I guess this is one way to explain the surprise in observing the artwork as it progresses and develops its own personality. Um, I do feel that if you start overthinking what you're drawing and how to draw it, that's when the mistake starts to creep into your artistic process. And that's when you begin to question what you're doing and, you know, where do I go next and what if this sucks and and you know, it goes on and on. So just relax and you know, if you draw a line that you're unhappy with or you do something that you think you should not have done with the design, maybe try to go with it anyway and allow the artwork to fix it. It might know what it wants to be better than you at times, you know? So right now we're working on the upper right hand corner of this drawing. And what you see me doing here is building up all of the black lines in the artwork and establishing various line weights throughout the image. Um, we're also bringing this structure that we have created so far forward and giving it its own place on paper space. Okay, so now you're seeing me down here in the lower left hand corner of the artwork and what I'm doing is I'm continuing to work my way around the image and building up these initial thin black lines into thicker, more defined shapes. You'll notice that by using different line weights to create these thicker lines around the design, it will have a positive effect on your eye and how you visually interpret the movement of the drawing. Um, it can give the impression that you're looking at the artwork in different perspectives and it really can look much more interesting than having the same size line going around your image. So right now, fundamentally, I'm using the blending stump to shade and to describe to the viewer where the lights and shadows are. But if you'll notice, what I'm doing technically is pulling the graphite from where I drew it before with the pencil, and I'm gently pulling it in from the outside of the design into the actual structure of the artwork. So in this drawing, I'm using a 3 quarter inch blending stump that I purchased at my local art store. Uh, earlier in the drawing, I used an 8B woodless graphite pencil and we are drawing on heavy stock paper. The reason why this works really well and can result in smoother, less choppy shading is because all the graphite that you need to create your shading effects are already on the paper in a location that is away from where you're shading. It's like having a reservoir of graphite that you can pull from as opposed to marking the paper with the pencil and blending over it. Now, you can do this with just the pencil and leave the blending stump out of the equation, but what I like about it is that it really does a great job at getting into the fibers of the paper and pulling all of those different variations of shade together. The blending stump is extremely good at holding the graphite, and I actually used it to draw with, as you kind of see me doing here. This helps to create the effect of depressions in your artwork and give more definition to the abstract design as a whole. You also see me switching between the different drawing tools often and this is primarily because I'm doing different things as I move along through creating the design. Sometimes I'm blending, sometimes I continue to create more lines and shapes with the graphite 
and pulling the graphite off of those lines and shapes to create shading effects within the design. It's like an orchestra of different things that come together. And this is where the improvisation comes in and constructing your image, constantly adding more definition until it's complete. So we're about finished here and I really hope that we all learn something new. And again, we should always be trying to listen to our artwork and sometimes let it teach us how to draw. Let it be the art teacher in your drawing session now and then. And this really is a part of what tribology is all about. It's about studying how to create images that reflect flow and motion. And a part of that is listening to your abstract design, allowing the artwork to be an integral part of the process by giving it the freedom to evolve into something that it wants to be.